In this video, I'm going to show you why you should never stop sourcing for new deals when you're looking to buy businesses. So let's get to it. And yeah, if you didn't get subscribe to the channel, it really helps me. I like the feedback. It's motivating me to create more videos. Comment below as well. I need this feedback, guys. I love it. It's That's what makes me the motivation and energy to continue with those videos. I get emails from you. I get messages from you. I get questions from you. This is what keeps motivating me. So definitely comment, just whatever, say something ask something i love it guys like the video subscribe share with your friend and let me know what you think and for those of you who want to watch our back while we do deals and learn the process see the description below for more info about that for those of you who want to invest money passively into our deals see the description below as well yeah just get in touch i know people message me about that and just ask me here what what should i do what should i do where should i contact you so just see the details below get in touch and we'll get back to you on that so here, as, as a reminder, when we look to buy businesses, it's like any marketing process. You need to go out there, have a huge list of prospects, and then slowly go through them, filter through the, I guess, less of good companies that you want to buy, filter them until you reach to, uh, I guess, a small list that you can actually work with and potentially buy some of those companies. This video is all about why you should never stop sourcing more deal, more deals for your deal flow, uh, because in a nutshell, if you do that, you can never know there are risks in this space of buying businesses, not risk of anything that can happen like really, really bad, but just the fact that when you're about to close a deal, sometimes uh, a deal might not be closed even when you, it looks like everything's going to move forward. The seller can one day just say, literally just regret the deal and you can lose your momentum. So it's really important to never stop looking for more deals in order to have that point where you don't need to start from scratch sourcing deals if it deals of yours, uh, if you don't close the one. And I think just something for filtering, when you filter through those deals, you need to be really ruthless about them. You need to have your criteria for deals for businesses you wanna buy and really filter through them really, really fast. And like I said, like brutally and forcefully, just filter those who you see no potential with. Otherwise you just waste a lot of time that you can spend on building more rapport with business owners where you can actually buy them. I think one of the most important thing you can do when you, you start to get into this space is just build yourself systems that automatically build in yourself deal flow. And even when I'm saying systems, that means potential, potential is you just say to yourself, hey, I'm going to go to one event, one business event once a month. I'm going to send letters, X amount of letters, whatever you can based on your time and budget. I'm going to send X amount of letters a, a month, no matter what. I'm going to have few uh, LinkedIn connections every month. So you have systems and automations if you're doing them yourself or if you have employees or people who help you, you gotta do it in order to keep your momentum going. Otherwise, like I said, you can destroy your deal flow. And then to start things from scratch when you just start to build deal flow from scratch, if you never did it, it's gonna take you some time, it's gonna take you some momentum building. And it just, in my opinion, it's just not worth it. It's always good to just have more companies yeah, to work with. And just the fact that even if you don't close a specific uh, deal, or uh, sorry, if you close a specific deal, it's always good to have those those back deal flow just because those businesses can potentially be a bolt-on acquisition to those to this main business. So even if you're about to close one deal, maybe you'll close two at the same time and then have that second business have lots of cross-selling opportunities and synergies between those businesses, and then you have amazing upsides. So yeah, when you begin, build your network, start to talk to accountants, lawyers, consultants, any expert in the field, start to build your network and put yourself out there as much as possible. This business is all about putting yourself out there and literally being ideally all over the place. Like even this YouTube channel, one of the reasons that I created it is yes, I want to document my journey, but I do have an agenda here, which as I know for me, I'll get eventually more deal for, for that from that. And I know this is my goal. I want to buy more businesses. I want to help more businesses. And I know that this channel is another source of deal flow for me. So I think the, the more you can put yourself out there, the better. And I think something really important when you prospect through deals is don't be attached to any specific deal and don't be emotional about deals. Business is about the mind, about being really rationalized about things. Um, so for example, you can never know even if the business owner is really serious. That's why you need to ask lots of questions when you're talking to a business owner. Always ask, figure out if he's really committed to sell or not. It's, it's a huge difference. I think you have to put it in your filter. When you look for prospects and deals, you got to figure out really fast. Is that business owner committed to sell or is he just going out there looking to figure out if he can get a better deal somewhere? Another thing that can happen to you when you're about to close a deal is just 
for example, let's say you were about to close a deal and the business owner, that's a deal that literally happened to me. I was about to close a business on a specific amount of number that we agreed. And then he lost his main client. And I'm talking a, a really, really important client. So as soon as he loses, he's basically exchanging all the valuation for the business. And obviously I'm not going to pay the same amount of money on that business that now lost his major client. So those things can, can literally destroy deals. And that happens. That's, that's part of life. Some things will happen. You need to be to expect that. And that's part of the process. It's all good. But when that happens, you need to be aware that you have other deal flow coming in all the time. So yeah, key takeaways from this video is always have constant sourcing, constant deal flow and filter them really, really fast. Obviously you have your criteria, if it's location, if it's an industry, if it's your passion, if it's the role that you'll need to be to have in that business, if it's thinking who's gonna be your manager, if it's thinking who's gonna grow those businesses, have all those different filters for your business when you're about to buy. And as soon as you have those deals, quickly filter them and go through your funnels and get to a point where you start to build rapport with only committed sellers who fit your criteria. I think that the most important thing is that, that you over time, obviously you need to build experience, but you'll see that eventually for some of those conversations, like I'm at a point right now where I talk to business owners, I can know within probably 10 minutes of call if this, this is a, a serious deal for me to work on. Um, when I started, it probably took me more. Like I had long one hour conversations with different business owners. And when I started, I, th I can tell you, I had sometimes literally 10, 20 calls a day, anywhere from 30 minutes to sometimes one hour calls with different business owners. And I had to filter them through them all just because I wanted to look at many deals as possible in order to pick the best businesses. Because if you don't have a huge range of deals to look at, it's just going to put you in a scarcity place where you just have to buy this one business just because that's the only business you talk to. I think, and I mentioned that in other videos, this is numbers game, guys. You need to put yourself out there as much as possible. Talk to as many business owners as possible. Filter through them as, as fast as possible. But you got to put the time. You got to get a few no's. You got to be uh, ready for that and just be prepared for the fact that, hey, you're going to put a lot of time into it, a lot of effort. And some of it might not work. And that's part of life. It's part of the process. It's numbers game. As long as, we, as, long as you're going to put yourself out there as much as possible, you're going to make it. I think what's, what's really, what I see happens a lot is when people say that they want to sell their business, for most business owners, that's probably the first time that they ever try to sell their business. That's why things can change so much. This is such an emotional process, especially for business owners who are the owners of those businesses for at least three, four, five, ten 10 plus years many times. It's a really emotional business and many times what happens is they figure out what will happen to them and to their business only while going through that process. Like they, they, they can figure out maybe sometimes too late the fact that maybe their selling price isn't going to make them enough money or as much money that they thought it will make them. Uh, many times I see business owners who just decide to bring in another manager to take their role completely and for them to just take less money and, and just have a lifestyle kind of business. So you need to really be aware of that fact that for most business owners you're going to talk to, it's going to be the first time them, well, for them to try to sell their business. So they're going to go with you throughout the process. Many times, even very close to closing the deal, they're going to learn things about themselves, about the money that they're actually going to make. Because the money you're going to pay for a business is not the money the owner is going to get 100% because there are also taxes involved. And if the business owner is not really aware of them, he's thinking, hey, I'm going to get $10 million for this business, for my business. Uh, but he's not considering tax. So for that alone, that can, that alone can, can change his perspective about the deal like immediately just because he's thinking, hey, I'm going to get 10 million, but then only close to the, 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 the completion of that deal, he's going to get his advisors and accountants and figuring out what's the best things to do in regards to taxes. And that's alone can destroy a deal because the owner wasn't aware that he's not going to take 100% of that cash um, to, to his bank account basically. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, I hope it's a it's pretty short, cool, um, really, really important video about the fact that you gotta continue sourcing deals all the time and you need to filter, filter through them as fast as you can. You gotta find the people who are really committed to buy businesses and not the people who are, um, let's say, just interested or thinking about uh, selling their business, right? So you wanna, those who are really committed, those who are motivated as much as possible, and you want to be there when it happens. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe and comment below if you didn't yet. Like this video. If you watch this video, I want you to comment. I don't care what you do, what you comment. Literally, just 
write write a number the number one if you want in the comment i want you to be engaged show me that you care show me that you take something out of it uh, i'm trying to to give as much value as i can and i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you soon